Father, we just thank you that we are called your children and that we are not worshiping tonight an idol or that you are just a God, but that you are our Father. And that we can tonight say, Papa Father, as Paul say in Romans 8, just because we did not receive a spirit of a bond slave. And Lord, we, we rest in the reality that you have created us in the image of Jesus Christ. And that your life is in us and this resurrection power that is working in us. Giving life to our mortal bodies, Lord. We just thank you for that tonight. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are in this place. And it doesn't matter how many of us is here. The words say, where two or more gather in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And Father, I just thank you right now that you are working with your word and your spirit, with truth and spirit. You work in our hearts. And Lord, I thank you that all of us, you put us on a path where we can really begin to follow you into the unknown, hearing your voice. And know that that is a safe place to be. And Father, I just thank you tonight that you love us unconditionally. And you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will never fail us, Father. And we praise you for that, Lord. And we thank you that every person that is here in this place tonight is precious in your eyes. And that you, have, uh, you, you went so far that you sent your Son so that we can be saved. And we just thank you tonight that the words say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes him might be saved, Lord. And we thank you that we won't perish. We thank you that you did not come into the world to condemn us, but to set us free of condemnation. And tonight we thank you that we are free of condemnation and accusation because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are standing innocent and righteous in your presence tonight. Thank you that we qualify for all the promises that's in your word. Thank you, Father. We praise you for that. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So tonight I'm going on on the subject of um, grace, the favor of God. And um, I'm actually going to share with you stuff that, that I'm really excited about. That the Holy Spirit is dealing with me. And I want to challenge you guys with this tonight. Um, how many of you know that there is more um, to the Christian walk than where you are now? Or do you guys think this is it? This is the ultimate. <laughs> it can't be the ultimate. You know, we, we, we sometimes just gather knowledge and gather knowledge and gather knowledge. But it's a different thing to hear God's voice and being led by the Spirit of God. It's completely different. How many of you agree with me on that? And you know what? Um, uh, uh, here's, here's what the Lord began to deal with me. Actually, someone else shared with me um, about this. Uh, a lady with the name of Joan Wiseman. She, she began to she share with me this. Um, this makes so much sense to me. How many of you agree with me that your mind is actually trained to look for the easiest way out? Your mind is actually programmed to look for the easiest path. Isn't it true? Uh, think for instance, you know, I, uh, 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 just as a simple illustration, um, I drive quite a lot out now to Hamilton and, and, and preach there. Or even if I go into the States and, and I uh, preach in the States, I would take the, uh, the map and I would get for the easiest, quickest road there. It's, it's just your mind. Are you guys with me? Your mind always look for the easiest way out. Isn't that true? Not him. Oh, not him. Okay, he's, he got a problem. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so anyway, um, coming back to my point is like, uh, I would climb on the highway uh, from Chatham, and then I go on the highway because it's the easiest and the quickest way to get to Hamilton. Are you with me? And the other day, the other day I just felt in my heart, um, I don't know why it is, um, and, and when I arrive in Hamilton, it's, it's as, if, as if I'm tired. You understand what I mean? Because it's so much traffic on the highway and you have to concentrate all the way. So the other day I decided to take the old road um, from Chatham. What, what you, the, is it the 102? I'm not sure now. The Highway 2. two highway 2, yeah. So I took that, that road. And it was so nice. It's farms and it's trees and it's... 
and it's so much things to see and I arrived in Hamilton I was not even tired you know it's the longest road it's the slowest road are you guys with me yep. and 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 here yes here's the reality neurologically we are man is designed like that it's part of your DNA you are like this so if we look if we look at a, at a job situation, we always, mankind is always trying to invent stuff to make it easier. You, you can look at it. It's just a mind thing. The people who invent it, probably their minds is very developed and stuff like that. So when I heard that and I look at that, I ask myself the question, why do people decide to follow the law and religion while it's the hardest path? Because the law is hardships, toiling, and it's frustrations. And why would mankind decide to follow that and, and fear to take the step into grace? Which is the rest of God. Are you guys with me? It is basically in the DNA of man. Um, because he received it in the garden. When he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... His nature changes, his beliefs change, and the whole world is functioning under that. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? So then, even if we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the problem is church was religion up to now. We were brought up, like you say, we were brought up in these ways. This is the mindset of mankind. Even um, Romans 2 verse 14 and 15 says um, that the Gentiles who do not know the law, do the law by nature, have the law by nature, and their own conscience is accusing them. So, um, uh, uh, coming back to that, it's in the nature of man. So, so, here's the point that I want to make is, so most people are basically living under a lie. Yeah. It's an absolute horrible lie that they are living under that they suffer under which make it so difficult for people because they think this is the easiest way they think this is the easy easy path out uh, in life I'm gonna do it my way I'm gonna I'm gonna better myself I'm gonna live up to that standard I'm gonna I'm gonna take things in my hands as I have been taught you know therefore it is scary for people it's really scary for people to take the step into grace because it's an unknown world for them and it means that they have to give it all over to God. Now, I've made some points here that I, that I wrote down here. Uh, um, uh, uh, let's look at fear before we go on. Let us look at fear. How many of you know that when you are in it, there's no fear? Let me give a good illustration. If you're going to jump out of an aeroplane for the first time with a parachute, a reality check, while you're in the plane and you look down, you are full of fear, man. You got fear. Until you are out of the plane. <laughs> are you with me? Now there is no more fear. Are you with me? Now you glide and, it's, and it's one, once the parachute is open, okay, now there is no more fear at all. But the unknown, you don't know what's going to happen. You're going, it's, it's fear. With everything in life, if God comes to us and God begins to speak to us and say, goes this direction, and it's an unknown road, we would fear to take that step. It, that fear immediately kicks in. And that is what makes it so difficult for mankind to, 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 to go out of the norm or go out of the status quo that they are in or to go out of. And that's why I think we sometimes miss the blessing. God got such a blessing out for you there. God got such an exciting life for you out there. But we are so conditioned to follow what we are used to. Are you with me? That we that that it's a strange world. It, we we can't think. How can I get in there? So um, so so what the, what the law does is is that the law establishes 
pride in you to the degree that you will always take stuff in your own hand in your own hands and and and, and here's what grace does grace grace means that Jesus runs the show he initiate everything he does the work and he finished the work <laughs> are you with me so so grace is actually so attractive if you really understand it because it's going to pull you out of the world and uh, those of you who were here last week and the previous week I think you, you will understand what I'm saying to you when I talk about when Paul say do not be conformed to this world but be renewed in your mind so to be conformed to this world got nothing to do with the world that me and you look at you see the church have created a, a world that we talk about is the booze it's the smoking it's the drinking it's all the carousing and all of that that's what we have called the world that's not the world the world that Paul is talking about is the legalistic world it's the law world that is what he is talking about it's the world that takes you uh, uh, or condition you to toil to work to labor to frustrate you so Paul said do not be conformed to that he's talking to believers he says but be renewed uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will know listen to this what is the good the acceptable and the perfect will of God so we if we wanted to get into the good acceptable and perfect will of God we got to be set free of the world system Jesus came to set you free from the world when Jesus say you shall know the truth and the truth set you free you know what that really means it means that Jesus have come to set you free from the fallen man that is conditioned to function according to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil okay so um, coming back to my point is that sonship because the, the, the tree have broken man down that man is confused in his, in his mind of who he is are you with me? Man is formless now. I have described it last week. I said that the word hamartia, uh, which is uh, uh, come, from, come from ha and miros, which means to be formless. Man is have a formless identity. Man ha is lost in his mind. So here comes Jesus and he established us in sonship again. Restore our identity. Amen. So when our identity is established, then it means if me and, then it means me and you have escaped the corruption of the world. We have escaped that system because now we are sons in the kingdom, and what is so amazing now we are led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! So so we talk about grace, the favor of God, and um, uh, uh, I want to read to you just three verses here. To, to encourage you, okay? Because this is where me and you can live, okay? This is where we really can live what I'm reading to you here. So the first verses that I want to read to you uh, is in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3. Um, number 1, I read from verse, The Lord, and I want you to see that tonight, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So David says here that the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me, okay? And I shall not lack. I shall not want. And I shall be in green pastures. That's a good place to be. You agree with me on that? Yeah. Now another verse that I want you to, to uh, pass, passage that I want you to go with me to is in John 10 and we read from verse 14 to 18. And here he say, if you are in John 10, 10, he says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. He's our shepherd. Amen. And I'm known by my own as the father knows me even so I know the father and I lay down my life for my sheep and another uh, uh, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd so Jesus used the same illustration here and he says but what is outstanding here is, is that Jesus says my sheep hear my voice okay so if me and you are struggling in this life with mindsets 
that also took the easiest road that looks like the easiest road but is a lie so with other words i'm bound by the law i'm bound by religious ways i'm bound I, I, I cannot hear God's voice. I cannot be led by the Spirit of God. Then it means I'm still influenced by this evil world, which is paneros. Paneros, which means toiling and the hardships. My heart still got be believes in me that I don't hear His voice. So the, how is God going to get me out of that? How, how is God going to get you out of that? Where is the starting point that He's going to get you out of that mindset so that you can come back now? now into his way that he got for you and I was meditating on that and the father shows me he says Peter there's only one way that I'm going to get people out of it and that's because of my love I begin to reveal my love to them because when he begin to reveal his love to us guess what you begin to trust mm -hmm. isn't that true and if you know his love, that's why Jesus says, my father knows me and I know him. Jesus was in an absolute trust relationship with his father, which is beautiful. Amen. So, so uh, 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 Jesus know who he was. He knows the father. He was in an absolute trust relationship. Why? Because the father have made it known to him that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus never struggle to be bound by a legalistic system or bound by the world system that would bring him into a path where he's frustrated, where he's in hardships and in toiling. He, he never fall into that. He was never bound by it. Why? Because he knows the, his father loves him. And there was a trust relationship between him and the father. What the father shows him, he did it. So that's how God starts with us. God begin to bring the gospel to us. The Holy Spirit come. He comforts us. He revealed to us the truth. Um, we preach this good news. And what happened? You fall in love with God. And you discover how much he loves for you. And now there is trust. And when there is trust. Now God can speak to you and begin to lead you onto an unknown path that is unknown to the mind, that is unknown and uh, insecure place for the man in the world, but for me and you it's a safe place. Wow. You guys understand what I'm saying here to you tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you for enthusiasm, you may sit down now. <laughs> So, so faith working through love according to Galatians 5, that, that word working in the Greek is energeo, that means that faith is energized by love. Wow, yeah. isn't it beautiful? So me and you, our faith is energized by the love of the Father that He has for us. So when, when, when we are confident in our hearts or how much the Father loves us, and we have an absolute confidence in that relationship, guess what happened? You, you suddenly begin to hear His voice. Mm -hmm. And now the Father can begin to say things to you and you're just going to go and do it. It, it. it is an unknown world, but it is the shepherd leading you as His sheep. Are you with me? And my sheep hear my voice and He bring you out of that struggle of hardships of toiling and frustrations and he bring you into rest he bring you into green pastures isn't that beautiful the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack or i shall not want isn't that beautiful so jesus leads you into that so we bring you in a place where you begin to experience the favor of God. Where you begin to absolutely live in the favor of God. Thank you Father. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? I'm telling you, man, this is simple stuff, This, but this is so real. Listen to what Jesus say in Matthew 11, verse 20, from verse 28. But I'm reading it to you out of the Message Bible. Listen to what it says. I love what the Message Bible say. He say, are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. Wow. I'll show you how to take a real rest. How many of you need a real rest? Come on, guys. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. 
keep company with me and you will learn to love freely and lightly. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that amazing tonight, huh? You see what the law of Moses does? It drives you to take things in your own hands. That's what the law of Moses does. It drives you. Religion drives you to take things in your own hands. The world that Paul is talking about, the Bible says the whole world lay under the sway of the evil one. That evil is poneros, I say it so many times. Which means uh, labors, toiling, frustrations. The whole world lie under the sway of that. Under the influence of that. That's what it means. So that's why we have to conform from... We need to conform our... We, we cannot allow ourselves to be conformed to that world. So Paul is talking to the Romans in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. And what Paul is saying, he's speaking to believers who were, had the gospel and they were influenced now. And he was fearful for, for where they are going with their lives. So he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know. Come on guys, I, I, I'm telling you, uh, to be honest with you, I'm in a place in my life that I want to know the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. But, and, and, and if you listen to my sermon here tonight and you can see where I'm going here, that the Holy Spirit is talking to me, He's dealing with me about stuff, is that I honestly believe that, that something wonderful is going to come loose any moment, which is already there. But it's not loose, you know, it's, it, there's so many things happening and going on. But right now, to be honest with you, I'm so tempted to take things in my own hands. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm so tempted to take things in my own hands. I'm so tempted to go on my own path, to follow the easiest way out in my mind, the easiest path, to try to find the easiest path uh, in my mind. But reality is grace um, uh, let you follow the unknown where Jesus leads. It can be scary to the darkened mind. <laughs> it's scary. Do you know that for the religious man, it's very scary to give over to God. Okay, God, you take over. It's very scary for, for a person that is in religion. But you know what is amazing? Jesus got so much better life for me and you. That's why Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So, so uh, uh, the moment that me and you uh, discover the love that we have in Jesus, the love that is revealed through Him and the Father, our minds come to rest. Isn't that beautiful? Your mind come to rest. And once your mind is in rest, now Jesus can begin to lead you. Now the Spirit of God can begin to lead you. Because your mind is not caught up into, uh, what's the next thing that I can do to get out of this thing, you know. Your mind rests now in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And now you can hear what He wants you to do. Amen. Alright, so, um, so, so what happened with, with so many people is they are conformed to the world. If you don't understand your identity in Jesus Christ, you will conform to the world. You will. You will conform to this world system. You will. It's, it's just a reality. But the moment that you discover your identity in the Father, see Jesus never struggled with that because the father spoke to him at the Jordan River and a cloud overcome come over them said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased so therefore he was even if he was tempted by Satan to take things in his own hands he said to me man shall not live by bread alone but by every proceeding word from the mouth of God what was the proceeding word this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus didn't need to do anything to prove who he is. He just rests in the reality of a son. Amen. So we are led by the Spirit of God, which is so beautiful, man. I, I, I love this stuff. So um, if you go back to John 4, or John 10, uh, verse 4, if you have your Bible in John 10, he says, And when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So the question is, what does he bring us out from? See, Jesus want to bring his church completely out of the world system. Completely out of, of legalism and the law. 
And when we hear His voice, we follow Him. See, what is beautiful about this passage, what I like of this passage, is that it's a promise that Jesus actually made here. He says, my sheep, they hear my voice. It's a promise. Yes. <laughs> he says, my sheep, they know my voice. They hear my voice. That is so beautiful, isn't it? And um, uh, 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 so, uh, but the thing that is outstanding in John 10 is that people say, uh, where Jesus says, I, 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 um, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and give it to you more, more abundantly. John 10 10. If you read that, what does Jesus mean? Does he talk about the devil there? He's not talking about the devil there. You always have to read the context of what he is talking about. The context is false teachers. Is the thief that come in over the wall that's not coming by the door. Who, who wants to keep people captive. Who wants to lead people astray with wrong doctrine and wrong teachings. If you study the context of what is going on there. But Jesus says they will hear my voice. They, won't hear, they will, will not hear another voice. They will know me and I will know them. So we will know our identity. We will know the love that the, the Father has for us. We will confidently rest in that. And Jesus will lead us. Isn't it beautiful? Man, uh, uh, I'm telling you, uh, in my lifetime in ministry, there was times that um, uh, 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 I remember the last church that we planted uh, in, in Nova Scotia uh, before I came over to Ontario. Um, I remember we were, we were like, like three, four months on the go and we were in this horrible, ugly green room. Actually a hall, it's a gymnasium in an old school. And uh, I think we were five or six people, man. And I remember that morning, the guy who led the praise of worship, he wasn't leading praise of worship. He was puking all over us. <coughs> and um, if you understand what I mean by that, he was so depressed, man. And it's like you bring a whole cloud over the place. And I was depressed, you know. And I was like, and I said that, Jesus, is this how it's going to be? You know, we're going here like now for four months. I mean, is, is this... Is th this is not good. I feel like throwing the towel and say to this people, man, we gave it a shot. This is good. Let's go home. I mean, this is like, <laughs> I mean, and I said, the room is depressed. I hate this color. I mean, it's one of the old school green colors. I don't know how to explain to you, you know. And I stand there and the next moment, here is Jesus right in front of me in a vision, just like that. And he stand with his hand like this with a gift wrapped up in his hand. And he was laughing and I thought, okay, cool, you want me to move in the gifts here or what's going on, you know? And, I, and he was, had a big smile on his life. And the next moment he walked up to me and he pushed it right into me. Then I felt it, I felt the anointing. And he was laughing, I can even hear in my ears the laughing, he laughed just like me. <laughs> Honestly, that's how it sounds, just like me. And uh, people always ask, how does the sound, voice of God sound, sound just like yours? <laughs> really? Yeah. Because he's speaking through you. So anyway, and I felt the Spirit of God all over me. And he says, do what I told you to do. And I'm like, what did you say to me? And I just went to the pulpit, whether that guy puke over us or anything, man. I was so full of the presence of God. I preached the most powerful sermon ever in my life. And we came out of that place and one lady said, Pastor, you were preaching like we had 10,000 people here today. And uh, I, I woke up and I said, what did you tell me to do? He says, I told you to plant churches. In one week I started working in Halifax and in, in New Glasgow. One in the middle of the week, the other one on a Sunday night. And when I did that, our church began to grow. And things just begin to happen, you know. And, uh, uh, but here's the thing that I want to say to you is, is that sometimes when we are like in the worst of the worst, He just surprises us, isn't, isn't it? Because He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, I will never fail you. He always got a plan. Even if it looks like dark, even if it, it's an unknown territory that you are in. You, you know, have you, have you ever been uh, going through unknown situations in life? 
it's absolutely everything is almost like unknown. I've, I've experienced it many times in Africa when we go on a mission trip that we run into unknown situations, you know, and that, that, that fear can grab you, you know. Uh, one night, I, I love to tell stories, one night we came out, we were in, in, in Zambia preaching the gospel for a whole week there and we, uh, we came back and we came through um, uh, Zimbabwe, Rhodesia and then we came into Botswana and we had this 4x4 four four vehicle, uh, just uh, three students in the back and me and a driver up front. It's in the middle of the night, we are tired, we have a full tank of gas, it's enough. We are not far from the border, it's enough to get over the, the border. And um, nowhere in Botswana is there lines on the, black, on, on, the, on, the, on the paved road. Nowhere. There's nowhere lines. There's not one white line or one yellow line. It's just a paved black piece running. So here we drive. And the next moment there's a car right in front of me in the middle of the night and um, there was the only place in that whole of Botswana, Botswana for two miles or two kilometers there's a straight white line in the middle of the road. The only place in the whole of Botswana. And I passed this car and just as I passed it the lights came on. And they basically painted just that part so that the cop can patrol that area wow. and if you pass him then they catch you. <laughs> yes. So here comes this guy. This is Africa. Everything is rotten. Everything is corrupted. Everything is corrupted. Not everything, but most of it. So we come up to the, to the... He says, you know what you did? I said, no. He said, you passed me. It was a single white line. I said, oh, sorry, officer. He says, um, 200 rand. South African currency. I said, I don't have 200 rand. We didn't have, we had a full tank of gas. We, we had nothing with us. I mean, we we. I said, I don't have 200 rand. I only have 100 rand and that's it. You know, he says, you tell me. He said, where are you coming from? I said, I came from Zambia. He said, you tell me you came from Zambia and you have only 100 rand on you. I said, I got a full tank of gas, it's no problem, we are, we are not far from the border, then we are home, then it's like 50 kilometers from there, we are home, it's, there's no problem. He says, okay, get out of the car, I take you into custody, <laughs> you and your vehicle and the people with you. Wow. Now, now, you don't want to end up in an African jail. <laughs> you don't want to end up in an Africa jail in a third world country, so now, I'm like, Jesus, this is not good. <laughs> I said, man, I only got 100 rand. So the Lord said to me, talk to him different. Yeah, yeah. So I began, I wasn't arrogant or anything. So I thought, okay, how would I talk different to him? <laughs> and the Lord said, begin to honor this man. Yes. Just like that in my yes. spirit. I said, sir, you're a man of authority. <laughs> <laughs> he would like that. Oh, and I begin to talk. I said, well, what is your rank? And he says, I'm sergeant. They said, man, I got such respect for you, man. I said, sir, we have made a huge mistake here. But we are tired. We preached the gospel up in Africa. We did good things. And I apologize to you. And I, that I've broke the law here. And um, please, we are tired. Can we go home? And... Um, he looked at me and says, where's that hundred dollars, <laughs> that hundred rand? I said, it's here, I gave it to him. He said, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> he pocketed that money. You understand what I mean? Yep. But it's unknown situation. Just as we pull away, the one guy say, oh, pastor, I forgot to tell you, we got another 200 rand here. <laughs> <laughs> She said, what did you do if he searched the vehicle, you know, and he come down on that 200 rand? Then we got trouble. Oh, we didn't know. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's an unknown situation. God really, really, I could clearly hear him out speak different to this man right now. And see, the kingdom functions different than what we think, you know. And, and, and Jesus can lead you out of any situation 
if you hear his voice right mm -hmm. if, if we are sensitive to his voice it doesn't matter what it is I don't know you may be in a business deal children issues marriage issues it doesn't matter it can be sickness it, it can be anything you know I know about friends of mine who were sicknesses in their body and God told them to change their diet and they were out of their sickness you know all kinds of things can 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 happen in life but but here's the deal that I want to tell you you are his sheep and he you know there is nobody Jesus used that illustration David used that illustration there's nobody that is more concerned about his sheep than a shepherd and there's one thing about the shepherd he knows sheep is dumb yes that's the honest truth he knows that sheep need someone to protect them uh, uh, I grew up in a sheep community, man. I've seen sheep four, five, six feet from the water. They don't even know they're from the, they're five, six feet from the water. It's it's just stupid. <laughs> I'm not saying you are stupid. It's good to be in that place. But the point that I want to make is, but shepherds. If you look at the illustration, there, the shepherds of today is different. Today, it is big. I mean, they bring them in with dogs and all kinds of stuff. Those days. The shepherd knew all those sheep by their name. How do they do that? You, you know, how do you give a sheep a name and the sheep hear that name and understand that name? Yeah, ask yourself that question. It's one of the dumbest animals ever. You, you, you can call a dog a name and he come. You understand? But what they do, the little lamb, they put him over their shoulder. Have you seen the shepherd, old shepherd pictures with the lamb on the shoulder? They walk with that lamb day after day carrying him and call his name over and over and over until he know that so that's why he called them by their name and he can whistle and they follow him those days sheep follow people but if you make a study of shepherds in those days there was nobody more committed to the health of those sheep to those sheep being looked after being protected and we're sheep that's why Jesus gave this illustration you're important you are his special treasure <laughs> he knows you by name he got a plan for your life to get out of where you are i made a statement here today if you do not know me then you cannot know yourself and all you see is your limitations so if you do not know god you won't know yourself because we are created in his image are you with me mm -hmm. and the only thing that you see is limitations in this life you see nothing more but the moment that you identify with him and you find your origin in God and you find your identity in God then you will know yourself are you with me as a son Jesus says if you've seen me you've seen the father and we have been created in his image so when you know yourself so so if you don't know yourself the only thing that you see is limitations isn't that true and that's the same in church in ministry in everything that we deal with we will only see limitations that's all that we will see if we don't know who, who we are but the good news is um, uh, the thing is is that God got limitless possibilities for me and you right in front of us and if we don't know who we are we won't see it mm -hmm. True. how are you doing with your amazing wonderful life that God got for you how are you doing with that you have to ask yourself that question and I'm challenged with this are you with me I'm challenged with the fact that we are led by the Spirit of God. I want to hear His voice so clearly. I want to go on an unknown road with Him. I am actually for a long time on it. But I mean, I felt like that I'm on something different here. The, the beginning of the year, the Lord began to show me I'm in transition. Transition, transition. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Next moment. What is going on here, God? You know, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. You guys, <laughs> transition. But we're on an unknown road. Where you just know one thing. He loves me. And I trust Him. And I can hear his voice and I'm going to follow him through this because there is something else on the go here that is better than what I can ever imagine. If you study the Bible right through the Bible, you will see so many men and women on the old covenant and in the new covenant that were in horrible situations. And then the deliverance from the Father come, which is just incredible.
which is so beautiful. And, and, and it was unknown to them. Amen. I, I look at Paul on the boat. Uh, uh, he warned them. He said, we can't, we can't go onto that boat. The, the, uh, we know the elements. This does not look good. But they doesn't listen to him. And they went on to, on, out onto that ocean. <laughs> and the next moment, they were in the middle of a horrible storm. Um, but if you study the whole passage, I don't want to tell you everything. don't want to go into it. I spoke about it before. But, but he, Paul actually take charge in, in, in that ocean unknown situation where nobody knows what's going to happen uh, those days the Roman soldiers when the ship is going to sink they kill the prisoners first they have to kill them that it was a law they had to kill them but Paul make a statement and says an angel from God appeared to me last night and he says this ship is going to run on the rocks and nobody's going to die <laughs> he took charge did you see how he took charge of that situation and and and, and but he, he, he hear God's voice in that setup that he was in and if you may be in the middle of something I want to tell you right now in a difficult situation sometimes we have we have we have made peace with certain situations and we actually adjust to it and we learn to survive by it day by day how many of you know what I'm talking about I want to tell you something don't make peace with that and say Jesus I know that there is unlimited possibilities that are going to take me out of this where I am right now. That can change this situation. Amen? Are you guys with me? Help me to hear your voice. Give me the wisdom to get through it. Because on the end of the day, listen to what Jesus is saying in these passages. My sheep hear my voice. Listen to what David says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. So with other words, there is a, a road... There's an unknown path to the natural mind where me and you hear God's voice, where He is leading us into a place where there's no lack. Are you with me? Spiritual, physically, emotionally, financially, relationships, everything, where there is no lack. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. Uh, Brandon Manning, he says, define yourself radically as the beloved of the Lord. <laughs> Define yourself radically as the beloved of God. I love that. Radically define yourself as the beloved of the Lord. Amen. I want to, I want to close down with this, this thing that someone um, shared, which I think is amazing. I never saw this. And this person said, I take that with my whole heart. I'm really taking it with my whole heart. This person says, I woke up this morning with this word in my mind and in my heart. And the word is colossal. I hope I pronounce it right. C-O-L-O-S-S-A-L. -S -S colossal. Is it right? The word is, he said, I woke up with this word colossal. Colossal. It stays in my heart and my mind. And I went um, and uh, the Lord uh, gave me this word that there is going to be a colossal breakthrough and and it's coming for the body of Christ and it's coming for the church and I went and the person says and I went and checked this word up listen to what the dictionary say um, it means it will bring acceleration increase and movement into greater manifestation of his promises wow. I love that huh a colossal breakthrough it will bring acceleration increase and movement into greater manifestation of his promises stay positioned rest and wait is the word and it makes me excited amen so so what is really happening with me and you when we are born again it's an amazing experience you agree with me when when we experience the life of Christ awakens in us put it that way when you begin to believe you hear the good news you believe and there's a great awakening in you amen you are enlightened amen but then then the real journey begins because now me and you are going 
onto an unknown road and it is a huge mind shift that is taking place the message of grace is a huge mind shift a huge paradigm shift the point is God don't want you to be where you are amen he wants to lead you out into something greater and bigger than yourself where you live and abide in his love with a trust relationship there's no better place than that Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, a, a friend of mine in South Africa, um, he was done when, when, when uh, things begin to go wrong in our country. Um, he was basically done and he went and sat on the mountain and said, Jesus, I'm bankrupt. I'm done. I'm going to lose it all. He said, I got a wife and kids and a family and there is no way out for us. I'm going to lose it all. Um, I lost my job. It's over. But I throw myself onto your grace and please help me. And he sat there on the mountain. He said he was still depressed. The next moment Jesus said to him, the Holy Spirit said to him, there's a contract coming up in the government. Go and tender for it. It was to do with computer cables and stuff. I don't know what it was. Something like that. He went off that mountain. He called the government. They say, yeah, there's a tender out. And he um, go and they say, you can put in a, a, you can bet on it. I think they bet on it. That's what they do on the tender. So he put everything together, work it out, how much it will cost, how much he will charge the government for it. It was a lot of money. It was a big contract. And he said, Jesus, I believe this is from you. And when he walked into the offices of the government, the guy who made the decision on who get the contract is an old friend of him of years ago. Good friend of him that he forgot about. <laughs> and this guy said to him, give it to me. And he says, I put it here on the side of my desk. You can go home. <laughs> Two days later, they called him. They said, you got the contract. <laughs> he was on his end. How did he end up in this? He heard God's voice. Come on, people. Yes. Yeah. This is not for only special people. <laughs> this is for all of us. We are all the beloved of the Lord. God wants you to live in His favor. Because if that happens, guess what? I remember how my friend, because of that change into a life of thanksgiving his whole life changed into thanksgiving because of what god has done for him and god wants you to break out of the mold of the world thinking and come into his rest that he can begin to guide you and lead you out from where you are and bring you into a broader space because when that miracle happens, when the favor and the blessing come loose you're gonna live in such happiness and thankfulness to the father come on Come on. Yes. That's the revelation of his love. I'm talking about money, you know, I'm talking about I'm talking about people's situations. But in you sit here tonight, think for yourself. Is there something in your life that you have just made peace with? This thing just don't change. And you have learned to 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 work your life around it. And you have learned to just survive with this thing and it's always there and it's like almost like a, a stone in the shoe how many of you know about what I'm talking about yet listen that's not God's plan for you believe me the only thing that needs to happen with me and you is, is just to come back to that place and say Jesus father I know you love me unconditionally I know that the possibilities is limitless and I want to hear your voice and I know I can hear your voice, it's a promise. Lead me out. Bring me into this, what you really got for me. And you know, sometimes we have to let go of certain things. Sometimes we have to let go of certain things that is in the way. Things that we think of. Things that, that hold on to our emotions. That we think if I lose this, it's going to be the worst ever for me. No, it's not. <laughs> Never. The Father always loves us, isn't it true? And, and I just wanted to, felt like I want to encourage you guys tonight with this. Because if you are led by the Spirit of God, you can be next to someone else who is standing on cursed ground and you are standing in the promised land. 
It's just a reality. Because that person's mind is darkened. Are you with me? That person cannot see what you see. That doesn't mean that mean you can't help that person to come over where you are. Amen. And, and, and renewing of the mind is absolutely a reality of me and you breaking loose from the world thinking, the world system. And let the Holy Spirit... Uh, uh, just as the Bible say that the spirit put to death the works of the flesh. Amen. So the spirit put to death the works, the, the darkened thoughts of the mind. Because the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. The mindset on the flesh is death. It's enmity to God, the Bible say. So me and you need to begin to focus inwards and just say, Father, Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that I'm your sheep. You're not going to let me go down. Now I'm going to follow you. Help me to be sensitive to your voice. Amen. Amen. Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen.